Almighty Yahweh promises to gather everyone he scattered. I am a Hebrew. We are Hebrews. I was born in Texas. I am a Hebrew and I am from Florida. I'm a Hebrew and I was born in California. I am a Hebrew and I was born in San Diego, California. I'm a Hebrew. I was born in Indiana. I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I am a Hebrew and I was born in Spain. I was born in Hebrew. I was born in Spain. I was born in Puerto Rico. I am a Hebrew from West Africa, Liberia. I am a Hebrew, and I was born in a straight way. We are Hebrews. Shalom, shalom, hallelujah. May the grace of our Messiah be with you all. Hallelujah. It's, what is it, November 12, 2020. You're listening to a live radio broadcast called Sister to Sister. I host the show every fifth day, and tonight my co-host and a friend and a mother of our nation, Mother Jennifer, has responsibilities that require her not to be here or to be absent, so I'm alone tonight. Um, I do know that and I do hope that the Elohim of peace is sanctifying each of you according to his will. I know he's faithful and I know he's doing that in your lives. I'm very thankful to have another week before you, another conversation before you. Um, may you all be preserved blamelessly in spirit and in body into the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which I do believe will happen in my lifetime. It benefits me to believe that. Um, we are rejoicing and coming together for our Peshka, our Passover day, March 26th of 2021. Get ready. Hallelujah, Friday, March 26th. Let me know if you hear me. Give me some sound checks. 
Give me some tens. I'm looking there now. Thank you. They're already there. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Thank you. Thank you for your support to the ministry, to the shepherd and his family. So call and let us know if you desire permission to come. If you want to make it to um, Passover this year, uh, having an early date, to me, removes any and all excuses from you finding out if you can, getting off from work, getting the funds financially, making it possible on your end. We'll be ready to receive you if you'll be ready to make the trip. And, of course, yes, you must get permission. So please um, get permission. As our shepherd has also informed you of a wonderful, big, big event we have coming up, a wedding on December the 13th, hallelujah, um, I would like to acknowledge two upright, very clean, set-apart, pure-minded, commandment-keeping Israelites, Brett and Tia, hallelujah. They're going to cleave to each other all the days of their life, and we get to witness, as well as all, the, all of heaven's courts will be a witness. We take marriage very, very seriously, and we love to see righteous people unite. Um, it is the fruit of our yacht and the fruit of our ministry, the fruit of our shepherd, hallelujah, to see what you will see. Um, you must also get permission to attend that as well. But if you know, some of you from other communities, if you know you're coming, we're taking your, your name and, and writing you down in our little log so we can feed you and have a wonderful experience with you. We welcome you. So please call and let us know. Um, I just I glorify the Most High Yah for His righteous representatives, no matter where you are. I live around some of them, but I, I praise Him for His angels and His saints. Um, so everyone listening, everyone, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Unless you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom. So our shepherd posed a really good question when he said, where is the kingdom? And many, or maybe few, knew that, hey, the kingdom's inside of me, right? Living in me, around me. I'm a witness to it. I, personally, Sister Ashley, I'm a witness to the kingdom being manifest in Israel and in front of my eyes. So I witnessed the parables. I witnessed the talents, the wheat, the tares, the press that purifies each of us, the, the power that's present to heal. I'm a witness to these things, and as well as the love that endures forever and the mercy that's new every morning. I'm a witness, and I glorify the Most High Yah for also being a witness to, to men's hearts, you know, being able to see men's hearts returning to their father and children's hearts following their father. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to experience here on earth. The building of little sanctuaries scattered throughout this land, the land of our captors, and really these little sanctuaries, me being a part of this one here in Lafayette, Tennessee, uh, it's preparing us for the fire. It's preparing us for the justice of our creator that will be manifest, as I said, as I desire in my lifetime. Um, I, I always have to testify the goodness of the Most High Yah, never, never to bore you, but always with sincerity. And I'm in awe continually of the minute details and the plans of our Yah, His intricacies, um, the exposure of secret sins that I anticipate every dead season, this dead season. He's deserving of more than just our words. And so I thank him for the exposure of those that are contrary to us and those who are hypocrites or liars or those who speak one thing and live another. And I expect that whether I see it or not, whether I know about it or not, it's a beautiful, full, rounded, well-balanced manifestation of his spirit to purge out sin. And may Yah have mercy on each of us as he judges. But I thank him for wisdom in forming relationships. I really thank him for that and want to share that with you. I now have wisdom in forming relationships that I initially didn't have with the Most High. I thank him for healing my body. I have, uh, I've had severe impairments in body dysfunctions just within eight months ago. And it's been a very powerful and miraculous journey for me to be where I'm at. And, it, and to be healed as I am, to be as strong as I am in body, in mind. Um, I hope to magnify Yah with the entirety of my story one day, um, if there's ever a need for it. 
It's not that I wouldn't um, testify to the goodness of our Father at all times and share with the world, but everything in season, you know. If there's a need, then it'll be made made manifest, made known. Um, I've been running with Yah for almost 14 years. I think my 14th year will be coming coming soon, or maybe even the completion of my 14th year. Well, like 2008, 13, 14 years, yes. And with all that time, my sisters, if you can say with all that time, it still still went by very quickly. It's still a very, it's a, a drop in the bucket, if you can say, a vapor of mist. But I, I, I have security, and it's something that's very void in many of you. So I can testify to the overcoming of knowing what it's like to be insecure and, you know, longing for security and then attaining it. So I do have something I can, you know, share and you can get there. But uh, my my husband provides soundness and stability um, that has withstood the test of time. Um, His children are safe. Not only are they safe because of his soundness of his mind, but the safe and security of the angel of the Mosiah who encamps around about us, but also the security that's provided by the brethren and the unity we have on the land. So I'm always praying for the hedge uh, on the community to be strengthened. Um, you know, and as as far as my, my husband's children go, and let me pause for a second because I got, I actually reached out to a, a sister who I love, and who I know spends time with the Father. I always tell people, spirit has no distance. You don't have to live with someone or even call them. You don't even got to speak to them to know them by the spirit, to think of them or to know their manner of life. And for this particular sister in Texas, I had a a, a third party, if you can say that, reach out to her for me and say, hey, uh, Mother Jennifer's not going to be on the show with me this day. Can you ask her to interview me um, via email? Ask me anything. Type it up. Type up some questions in an email, and I'll just answer them. So she did, and I read them. They're great questions. I didn't want to premeditate my answers, so I didn't. I didn't make notes. I have about ten questions on email form. I got two from the sound room, and that's where we're going. So I'm just going to answer those questions tonight, so so that you know. Uh, in case you want to sit down and be interested or in case you don't. Um, But as far as my husband's children, my sisters, I get to steward their minds. And I get to teach that, I get to teach honesty to them, even even when other ways are introduced, whether it generates from their own heart or uh, a, a worldly mind. You know, you get to really steward their minds and teach them honesty. And... I agree, as does my husband, that you should warn male children of women. I consist—I consistently exalt their father. And, you know, sometimes I say things on the show, so maybe if you're ever interested in the little things that I say, you can speak to me, you can call me. Um, I'm not the only one. I can put you in contact with someone else who has this same mind if that's what you're striving for. So I just wanted to say that I... I Greatly agree with Shepard's um, direction. Also, when Shepard says, I'm going to warn my male son or men in general about women, hear with balance because he would also greatly teach how precious they are. Never forget that, but that's for another show. So I do consistently exalt their father in my speech. The men on the land, the brethren, our leaders, um, they're they're constantly being reminded to bow or acknowledge or how to treat. You know, it doesn't mean they're going to be perfect every time. So if you're going to watch them, they might not always nail it, but behind the scenes we'll remind them this is what you did, this is what you should have done. You know, to the the opening of doors, to letting them go in first, to the bowing and the greeting, to, you know, let them speak before you speak, etc. So you just, you try to put this honor into them so that they'll manifest it one day and keep their father's reputation, which is very, very uh, important in our nation. But um, warning them of all sorts of behaviors and natures, uh, particularly women, uh, but never allowing their emotional bond with me to be stronger than their love for their dad. 
you know, and there's, there's a balance between that too. I don't want to spend too much time on that. I just want to throw that out there. But if you don't know how my husband and how my shepherd have greatly contributed to me, because a lot of you maybe haven't met me or maybe you don't know me personally and you just hear me behind the show and this is a very different dynamic than who I really am. But if you don't know how how much, like, these men have greatly contributed to me, I'll give you an example, because my ongoing perfection is is greatly enlarged because of them. Um, but you can ask them. Ask my husband. My husband will tell you. You know, and, and a, a lot of times sisters really love it when I throw myself on the sword because they can laugh a little. You know, the, the pressure's off them if I talk about myself. Um, so it's funny. But my husband said, man, I, his life had no drama until me. <laughs> Do you understand that statement? I had no drama until my wife. That's not a good thing, right? And my shepherd said, this is years and years ago, right? These men are saying there's a deacon, deacon said, or I'm sorry, shepherd said, if Deacon Bill ever becomes a complainer, it'll be Ashley's fault. And those type of comments among thousands have helped motivate me mentally to endure the race and to produce fruit. And I pray that each of you are receiving the motivation that you need to keep your hand on the plow and never look back. You know, the little nugget that says, oh, man, like if my husband's a complainer, it's going to be my fault. Um, if my, you know, my, my husband has drama because of me, there's always something going on because of me, you know what I mean? Bringing attention to my husband's house because of me. Um, and, and that wasn't my case. I was just, I'm just going, you know, saying even a few more things, but... If you're if you're new to us, we do not promote any teacher, any pastor, or any other ministry outside of this one, and simply because there's no one else on earth that has the fruit of our Creator like we do. Pastor has always said, if you find someone, show us. It's not that we wouldn't willingly submit ourselves to very like-minded people and surrender ourselves to, uh, you know, more Yah-fearing, more obedient fruitful, Holy Spirit-filled people, deliverance ministry, where is it at? You know, where is it at? Um, and so nothing like the straightway truth that's scattered in the Philippines and Canada and Finland, Australia, Kenya, Israel, all these other countries. And um, we got channels. We got, um, you know, related channels, as YouTube calls them, but we got straightway news and we got Teacher Eric Robinson, please, Sister Sakina, throw some of these in the chat room if you can. Any links? We got uh, Straightway Kansas City, and we got the East Coast Saints. Uh, some of them that I'm saying to you don't have um, YouTube channels, but if you can just get a gist of all that we're we're promoting, Yah, within these assemblies, you got Straightway New York, which is now Clarksville, Straightway Georgia, Straightway uh, Goshen, Straightway Praise Land, Straightway Promise Land. Uh, Straightway, Kentucky. Um, a lot of these are led by our leaders, Elder Elder Rufus, uh, um, Brother Kabir, Elder Mitch. Um, so we got a good thing going on. We really, really do. And uh, I'm very grateful to be a part of it. So I think I've said enough about my heart, my acknowledgments, my, my gratefulness. Um, I'm just here as a servant, serving the Most High God, just like every one of you, trying to make it to the same uh, and only kingdom of the Most High God as you. And uh, it's great to know many of you on this side of glory. Uh, blessings again to pastors, immediate family and house, to everyone and everything um, that his hand touches. May it all be blessed. Um, so let's go to this email. Uh, I appreciate all these questions. I asked her to, after the interview, to ask me anything. If, if you don't have questions for me, I never want to keep someone's time, and I don't desire to speak. <laughs> so I'm literally doing this for you. Um, she says, Shalom, first and foremost, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to ask you these questions, and I thank you sincerely for answering now, she says, to the interviewer, blessings and peace be unto you, but she didn't know she's my interviewer. And she said, and to me, um, may his grace, love, and mercy continue to abound in you. Question number one. Great job, by the way. You got, um, you considered your questions. You wrote them um, 
you know, I really, everything about it. You just, you just did a great job. I was glad I, I'm glad I asked you. And when I had asked her through a third party, um, the sister said she was so excited. Uh, she was squealing into the phone for the opportunity to ask questions that would, you know, benefit anyone who would get answers. Um, so, as I said, I didn't want to do a lot of premeditating. At first, I checked this email sometime this morning, and, you know, I even got out my pen and paper, wanted to maybe write out some verses or whatever, and I thought maybe that's a little too, that's a little too much script work, you know. Let me just freestyle it. And at least for my uh, experience as a speaker. You always consider your audience and you always consider how they're going to receive. And the dynamic about speaking in the Messiah is different because though you consider the audience, you can't be controlled by them. And with this particular, these questions, I'm going to be very open and I'm going to be very heart to heart with this sister in particular. And then for everyone else, I pray you benefit if y'all give you ears to hear. So, um, I would not be swayed. Hallelujah. All right, so question number one says, Pastor put out a message on Patreon yesterday. Pause. Patreon, please go check it out. Please, um, uh, I always want to say subscribe, but please uh, be a member, if at all possible, be a member. Care enough about yourself that you don't want to miss anything that's being offered from the ministry. If you really serve and you really strive and you want to hear, then support us there because it is different. Um, on Patreon, and he is there is more freedom of speech, and we just don't know how reliable YouTube is always going to be. All right, so back to question number one. Pastor put out a message on Patreon yesterday and mentioned the daughters of Sarah versus a worldly woman. To a daughter of Sarah, correction is beautiful, but to a wicked woman, it's totally offensive. So how has your hearing changed over the years? And how were you able to mature in your way of thinking and hearing? Okay? So there's a two-part question, and this was just the first part, so I'll pause here. How, was your, how has your hearing changed over the years, and how were you able to mature in your way of thinking and hearing? So uh, hearing is definitely a mystery, isn't it? The Word says it's given to you to know the mystery of Yah if you hear. So you will find out the mysteries of Yah if you hear. The word says faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word. I consider Isaiah who said that he had pain of hearing. He was given a vision, and words came into his ears and communication from the Father, and he said, I have pain of hearing, and I'm bowed down with hearing. So there's an aspect of hearing that's painful. And Mark, I think it's chapter 6, you can post verse 2, uh, Sakina, if I'm spot on, and talks about they heard and they were astonished. So if you think about being astonished when you hear, that's a emotion, right? Or maybe not an emotion, but a sensational response in your body. That's a, whoa, that's, a, that's an effect, you know, it's an impact that the words make. Like Pastor said, if I'm just speaking, if I was speaking nothing without the Spirit, it wouldn't have such a such an impact. But because I speak by the Spirit and speak the truth, it comes and pierces as a sword. So I have to say that my desire to hear and apply has never changed. It's only increased my desire to hear with fear and do has only increased. It's very rare to see someone that initially doesn't want to hear and then they change that because a lot of times a very stubborn and willful circumstance, you have that nature and it remains in you. Um, so Proverbs says that the hearing ear and the seeing eye, Yah made them both. So he gets credit, first and foremost, for my ability to hear the word. is because he gave me a hearing ear. It's nothing I've done on my own. And those that turn their ear 
from hearing their prayer is an abomination. So there's a meekness in hearing. When you are hearing from the Spirit of Yah in a vessel before you, it is you and Yah and Yah discerning your heart. Your response, which is what I learned early on, that my inner man and my inner man's communication was Yah judging the very thought and the intent of my heart and dividing it with a sword. And so there's fear in that because you can't pretend or cover up. You can't mask how you hear to him. And so I know Matthew says these people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull. So that's evident. How would someone's ears be dull if they're not going to do, live? And then the saddest part is they believe they are. They don't even see them on selves. Yet they point the finger. So, yes, there's a lot to it. So let me get back to it. How has your hearing changed over the years? So your hearing is perfected by the elimination of the voices that oppose the truth you're hearing. So consistently taking your emotions and replacing them with reality and replacing them with fact and replacing them with how Yah thinks, which is also something you have to learn. Uh, uh, Replacing your own thoughts with how your husband thinks. Um, That type of resisting has never changed in me from early on. Um, I just simply wanted to be a hearer. So just... Constantly, without excuse, denying personal justification because it was there. Yes, you want to be right. Yes, this feels right. Yes, this, 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 right. But deny, deny, deny. Discerning internal voices that are not me. And then listening. Just listening. I guess that's all I can say. And she says, how are you able to mature in your way of thinking and hearing? And... A lot of my answers tonight will be by prayer. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of like a, you have a want, you have a desire first, right? You desire freedom, you desire to change, you desire whatever, like fill in the blank. You know, you write a blank right in front of you on your paper, you desire what? What is it? What are you desiring right now? It's it's something, right? Because this thing before you is large. You know, maybe you're offended, maybe it's a bitterness, maybe it's a hate, Um, whatever this is in front of you. So the desire to defeat it is first. And then the fight is next. And then you receive the reward. So it's not a time frame. It's perfecting casting down and knowing your opponent. You know where the thought's coming from and originating from, and you know that it's not bringing you closer to the Father. It's dividing you from Him. So I matured by constantly casting down. Um, yeah, I think I can leave it right there. How's that sound, Sakina? Perfect. Okay, she says perfect. All right. She also says, can you give the daughters of Zion some advice in this area? area and also talk about the communication that goes on in the mind after truth goes forth from the man of Yah. Sure. Okay, so let's talk about the communication that goes on in the mind after truth goes forth from the man of Yah. Now, your communication in your mind is based on your level of love and desire for understanding. It's based on your level of fight and resistance all week long. It's based on your amount of flesh manifestation. So you express flesh all week, you're going to resist the word, right? So let's say the man of Yah is in front of you. There's a different stages of hearing. Yes, there's going to be the blatant, you know, let's go black or white for a moment, total rebellion and rejection and the outward radiation, the 
outward radiation that is, to me, very dishonorable and disrespectful to your environment and to the person speaking because you don't care how much your thoughts affect their message. I've talked about that before. And rebellion or total rejection in hearing is just resistance without desire to change. So that's part of it, my sisters. Um, most of you, if you're there, you probably wouldn't even recognize it because you're very settled right where you are. A lot of you haven't been weakened enough by the Father. You still manifest so many things outwardly to prove you're not hearing because hearing and applying is actually changing and not allowing the flesh to dominate so much of you. Maybe that will come up again later. Okay, so you got rebellion, got complete re rebellion or resistance or rejection in hearing. You just, I'm not, you, you're going to turn the video off. You're going to turn the screen off. You're going to pick up the computer as, as women have done, uh, slam something, throw something. You're going to manifest and hate the man that's listening to the man, uh, the man in your house that's listening to the man, uh, Shepherd Pastor Dow. So that can happen. Or maybe you want to hear because something's leading you back to the voice or to pass it out, but rejection and hurts and traumas and things from the past have really, really scarred you, and you cannot see how such a tough administration of speech could ever be love or acceptable because of this Roman society. So there's that aspect of hearing where you hear with rejection. I believe all one, all women, 110% of us, know what it's like to hear with rejection. Meaning, as Pastor said before, I don't even think so much of, uh, how do I word it, it's pretty lofty of any of you to believe that he's talking straight to you, honestly, because he's not wasting his time on you. Now, that sounds offensive, but guess what? The man's busy. He's got his own family and life, and he's just simply doing his role. So for him to be talking directly to you as if you are to take it personal and get offended at him is not proper hearing. Okay? There are times names are called. There are times it's straight to you. Okay? To y'all be the glory. But when you're hearing, you want to pay attention to that rejection response because it's constantly reminding you of your weakness. And you're not going to receive Yah's love to its entirety to set you free. There's so much bondage that's manifested in hearing. If you've just been given the ears to hear, you'll know. And you begin to hear that communication inside of you that resists the man of Yah. Okay, so you got rebellion, you got resistance, and then you just got um, uh, total acceptance, which is which is where I'm at. You sometimes when I talk this way, people say you 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 know you are speaking too highly of yourself and you're too lofty. And I've had I I can't tell you how many conversations where people uh, correct me on my speech or or the show or something I've said or whatever. And I understand I understand where you're at, but. When you push a woman out here like this to talk on this uh, platform, to support a patriarchal ministry, to talk this in, in your face with other women, you don't know the half of the type of strength that I have to manifest. So don't doubt that I could be a better hearer than you. Okay? That's humbling. Eat the pie. When you hear with clarity, you can apply with perfection. And you want that inner voice of communication of the rejections and the misunderstandings even or just just simply not knowing what Shepherd is saying. You want all that to be silenced. And how do you do that, Ashley? How do I silence the voice that is accusing him or, 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 or? By prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting, 
if you look to the other source or the other other people or maybe my husband can help me and maybe if I call somebody they can help and maybe I can write an email and they can help. No, 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 no. Prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. And so I think we all understand that there's that voice of communication and you strengthen that voice. You, it's never, it doesn't go away. It's like strengthening your amen corner, you know, when you're hearing and you're just receiving. Yes, yes, clear signal. Considering the one speaking, knowing his intention, it's odds are in my favor that I know Pastor personally and that I was, you know, if I can say even a member of his house. I never lived with him, but, you know, being brought up like a daughter for three years, um, being close to his heart and his um, wife, a uh, woman at the time. So, yes, it's in my favor, all right, that I got that experience and that I really was able to understand him. You know, it's like, okay, now I got a father, and the father's dealing with me, if you can say harshly, in, in my face, uh, not holding back, et cetera, um, but giving it, giving it to me. Uh, you know, the world is cold and heartless and cruel. Why would we want someone to speak to us in beds of roses and not warn us, you know, and strengthen us for the battle? So, uh, yes, it's in my favor that I know him personally. But despite all that, okay, let's say I didn't. Because if you want to say it and, and be real, I lost him years ago. I lost him to all of you. I lost him because I got married. You know, I went my own way, if you can say, you know. So now it's me and Yah, and I got to apply, and I got to hear as a woman. So this man in front of me, I know his manner of life. I know his intent, and as I've always said and will testify to my death, his love is not in question. And that's a lot of trust that I and many other people put in him. But I can say it because I know he's going to, hey, when he hears things like this, if he ever were to hear it, it's going to push him even harder. Right? That dynamic of these people looking up to me, following me, living after me, I've got to do this for the Most High Yah, for him to get glory out of my life, you know? So anyway, if you could, it's to your detriment that you don't know him personally, but he's before you daily in videos that you would learn his heart. Learning a man isn't just laying with a man, as so many of you long for. It's putting someone in front of you as a mentor and absorbing what they teach. You know, you can watch Rachel Ray and cook like her. I mean, come on, let's produce. I hear this man. I hear what he's saying. I know his intent. I see the fruit. You know, no false expectations of how I got to feel attached. So I hope that helps um, because you can mature that inner communication and you can get to a point of complete, uh, complete rece reception if you trust and honor this man. So what is faulty if your hearing is faulty? Your trust in the Father. Your trust in the Father is faulty because you're saying, I trust this man as the man of Yah. This is my shepherd. This is my authority. This is the one I'm submitted to. This is the one I'm loving. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. But. But what? What you going to trust now? What can so quickly and easily take your testimony away from you? I got to trust you, Father. You brought me here. I wouldn't have come here myself. I'm a part of a people that I would have never been with. I wouldn't have known them. I wouldn't have shared this testimony. I'm seeing miraculous things. I'm seeing, hey, even a virgin's a miracle. Right? I'm seeing children submit to their father. What is that? I'm, I'm speaking from, from a world mind, you know? It's like, it's nothing to me. I live this thing. But to y'all, it's foreign. If you don't live tight-knit, and an assembly that's serving and keeping the laws of the Most High Yah, man, you're, you're void of sight and hopefully not dull of hearing. Hearing's all you got. So you got to lay yourself down with the Father and have a, have a conversation with Him. I mean, you want to, hey, I, I want to believe this is your man, so you got to show me. Nobody's going to be around when you talk to Yah like that. Just you and Yah. Let Yah make Himself personal to you. He's a personal Elohim, you know? He's a powerful Elohim. 
Uh, Pastor Dow ain't persuading anybody to hear him. Like he said, click off the video. Gate swings both ways. You know, you don't got to hear. You don't got to subscribe. So when he says people ain't listening to his videos and people ain't listening to my blog talk, man, amen. And I, I got no personal interest in it and no, no selfish gain. I would do this out of obedience if I never had anyone listen. So it's not about that. But in application, we prove we're dull of hearing. So uh, you, you take this to the Father, you lay it out, and you say, man, I got some kind of faulty issue. I'm, fault I'm faulting Yah, and I didn't even know, you know, because I'm listening for the next thing that Shepherd says that might not be right. I got, I got my ears on guard, you know, so I can sort through what I'm hearing. That's what happens. It's manifest every week. Question number two. How was that, Sakina? Good. Okay. Clear. Perfect. Clear. Can you tell us when Yah became real in your life? What was your crossover moment when Yah came off the pages of the book for you? All right. Can you tell us when Yah became real in your life? And what was your crossover moment when Yah came off the pages of the book for you? Um, yes, I can tell you. One of them, and I go back... One of them, okay, one, was when I lost Pastor Dow as a father. Lost might be a wrong word because he's my shepherd. But when a woman leaves her father and cleaves to her man, right, the man really does it, okay, he leaves father, mother, and cleaves his woman all the days of his life, but... I left father, and now I'm going to my man. Okay? Now where's your yah? The thing you trusted in, the thing you knew, the thing you built your foundation on, now it's time to manifest it. And I can't do it without your yah. So I left a very stern and, um, what's a good word? A stern and faithful voice that was no longer present in my life that I had established my roots on to now, he's not around. It's me and a gentle man. It's me and a quiet man, a sound man, not easily shaken. Don't talk a lot. Rebukes differently. Christ-like. So the Bible became real in those moments because you aim to please and you aim to submit and you have all these personal goals and you meet back with such a, such a force of gentleness that was foreign to me because that manifestation of love had never happened to me. Um, I think... The Bible became real all throughout. I mean, I, I, I have to say, the Bible meant nothing to me. The words on the pages in the book meant nothing to me. Some of you can say, oh, I read it and I did this and I grew up in vacation Bible study and I, I cared. I didn't care. Even when I moved here, the Bible was nothing to me. Why? Because the pages were not real. The same thing, some of y'all can, y'all need to face that reality in your life now. The book means nothing to you. You don't read it. You feel better because you own one. But when do you open it? What does it mean to you? How much of it do you know, you know? And so really a lot of the, the application of it comes in a, in a iron sharpened iron situation, in a situation that you've never faced before. Um, maybe when sacrifice is required out of you, when you've got to give something up, when you have to make a great change and you just meet the thing that is bigger than you, you know? And for me, yeah, it was marriage. Um, I knew what I needed to be and I knew what I wanted to be. And I didn't know how long it would take to get there. So I needed, I needed that Bible and I needed the Word. I've always personally believed, and this is just my, like, insert opinion, 
I've always personally believed that men, being the priests of the homes, they have a very different dynamic with the father. Their relationships built solid on that word and the study of it. And, you know, I watch my own husband with it. So it's an everyday part of him. Women, being much more emotional, um, it's easier to pray, you know. So I had to learn how to um, put the Bible in front of me and make it work. I don't mean make it work in my world and, and it fit into my world. I just mean in general. Uh, studying like a man is not ever something I've ever done. Um, they they study and Yah intervenes and deals with them and this, that, and the other. And for me, no, it wasn't like that. You just simply stick to the word that is preached Shabbat to Shabbat because you're a receiver of it, right? You're not a go to the word and find revelation, you know? So you're a receiver of the word. For me, in my personal opinion, reading the Bible is different. You're taking it in and you're applying it, right? But for them, they're living it, they're giving it out, um, progenitors of things. But nevertheless, I developed a good, strong foundation with the Bible by, man, meeting requirements that were in it. You know, one of them, um, one of them always being love, love your neighbor as yourself, you know. Humbly admitting to the things that were were not right in me. I mean, I know, I, I got a lot of saints that would testify the endurance that they had to manifest for me, you know. But my heart, from the very beginning, was never to hurt and only to help and never to hinder. I, I, I fell, right? I fell. I made mistakes. I did this. I did that. I'm still ongoing. Um, but early on, it was wanting to think of someone else above myself at all costs. Hallelujah. So how was that, Sakina? <laughs> Hallelujah. She's my she's my corner. Um, if I, I, I guarantee if I did part two, three, four, or 14, I read them again, my answers would be completely different. Y'all know how it goes, but this is just off the fly. Question number three, what was the most trying experience in your walk, and how were you able to overcome? Oh, that's easy. What was the most trying experience in your walk? My offense. My hate. Do you want to go from zero to 60? Be Ashley about five years ago. To try to suppress her was like breaks on the devil. <laughs> he don't clock out, you know. The most trying experience in my walk was my offense. Now, you can say, well, what about her? Okay, yeah. So everybody, everybody will start guessing, you know. Who, who could it be? See, that's your hearing. Is she still on the community? That's your hearing. Was she ever on the community? Don't do that. You know what I mean? Don't do that. Um, just just hear. Apply. Um, you know, what, for me, why why was, I'll tell you a little story about, about my offense and why I believe that I had it for so long. Number one, I pegged, I pegged my offense off the jump. I wasn't, I wasn't wanting it. Asking for it, I'm, I stayed on my face from the first day. No one is feeding it. I'm not hearing it from nobody but the devil. But I'm staying on my face. I'm trying to manifest humility when all I got is rage. Right? So whether or not someone is guilty of how you see or how you perceive, you still got the passion against what you perceive, you know. And let's just say, by chance, what you see is real. Let's just say it is. And that person is in front of you to say, you see how much you don't love me? You can't love her. And it's like, shit. So I got to, this is set before me so I can love? Oh, my God. Clock out. Right? But I'm talking to y'all like this. Like, please, Father. And I'm feeling offense? What you say? It's burning in me. Why we act like we ain't offended, sisters, when it's burning in you? 
It's eating you alive. What are you pretending for? Why was I in my offense so long so that I could understand the ins and outs of its voice and its passion and how it burns and how it talks and how it lies so I can talk to you? That's my personal opinion. Because if Yah delivered me according to my desire to be free, it wouldn't have lasted so long. Because I was determined to get it off of me. I was determined that the devil was a liar. I wasn't giving over to it. I'm seeking his face constantly. I'm fasting constantly because I'm trying to produce love. And I hate. And I can't stand. And I'm ready to pull out my sword and take this lady's head off. And the next time she talks to me and do this and do that because I'm listening to all these voices in my head, I'm about, I'm about ready to slay. So don't tell me I can't relate. The only thing you can't relate to is complete and total freedom and not even remembering what an offense was like. I'm coming from overcoming side and telling you, hey, what's the most trying experience in your walk? Offense. I mastered that offense that burned in me for years. Then, hey, yes, woe unto them who offense, offense is going to come, right? Watch me guard my heart because I was taught the intricacies. I was delivered from it, set free completely. I understand. I fought hard for freedom, and I won't give it up. Understand? It's another aspect of the Most High Yah that each of you need to understand. If you fight hard, if you fight long, if you resist long, and you're granted freedom, you'll hold on to it with much more reverence than you ever would have if it was given to you easily. You want battles to last, not because it feels great, because it's Yah's time. It's His sovereignty that sets you free. And it's your complete surrender that says, I have no end in this matter. I don't know when I'll be free. I don't know if I'll be free. But you're setting your face to the ground. I know I speak over people's heads because I'm not really sure if many of you or any of you are really, really engaged in the battle like I am. Number four, there's no doubt that when you are ministering to sisters, it's very impactful. I'm often amazed at the clarity in which you speak and your wisdom and understanding the word. How are you able to get to this place in your walk to hear from the Father so clearly and not just hear but apply also? Hey, Thank you so much for allowing anything that comes from me to be impactful. Number one, all glory and honor to the Most High Yah. I have a wonderful husband. I have a great leader. And I have examples in my life of what to do and what not to do. And I've allowed those examples to minister. I do a lot of thinking. I do a lot of meditating. I always have. It wasn't always easy. But now I have a I have such a, a quiet place I can take myself. It wouldn't matter if my three children are blowing shofars. There's such a stillness I can take my mind to. And you got to get there. Set it as your personal goal. I'm going to get to that still place. I'm going to get to that quiet place where I can just, it's me and y'all. And when that happens, it's not, you know, oh, I'm a woman. I'm just I'm just being fed new revelation from on high. No, I'm simply meditating upon what I'm hearing. You know, I'm hearing or what what's in the word with what's what is being manifested in front of me, what my shepherd is teaching, you know, and, and it just you gotta understand too, my sisters. Living set apart, pause. Living set apart. Pause. What is that? What is living set apart? Do you have to be at Straightway Community 24-7 all year round? Do you have to have a community um, right now to, to live set apart? No. No, there's a set apartness that you can go to to say, I am going to be different and I am going to represent the Most High Yah and I am going to receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and I'm going to withdraw from these people because they're not doing me good and I'm going to stop calling my mom. You know, and you and you start disconnecting because why? You want to live set apart, right? So living set apart as I have and women before me, um, 
huge special credit to, to Mother Carol, who doesn't get enough credit for the fruit that I try to uh, bring to y'all. Um, I, I, I watched her. Do you think that I learned holiness from Mother because everything was wonderful and she just emanates holiness and there was never no resistance? No. I watched that woman go through innumerable circumstances. Some of them I wouldn't even name because you would automatically um, dishonor the community. <laughs> you you would I don't know I don't know what you would think of us. But innumerable circumstances have befallen her and she's always produced fruit. And even early on when I would think, Man, that woman's passive. Man, why is she saying something? Man, these people just walking all over her. Man, man, I felt like I needed I needed to defend her. I felt like here's another thing. I'm I'm gonna slice this into um can you tell us when y'all became real in your life and what was your crossover moment when y'all came off the page of the book for you? I'm gonna tell you a really hurtful thing. When I when I came from uh operating in the flesh and then operating in, in the truth and getting married and not being able to defend Pastor and Mother Carol when someone or something was said or done to them was absolutely devastating to me. It's not my responsibility to defend them, nor am I even tempted now. But then it was everything. If a woman cocked her head sideways, rolled her eyes, or spoke some kind of way to Mother Carol, I'm pulling my sword out. I was always that way. What you mean you're going to dishonor Pastor Dow's wife just because you think she ain't doing or saying? You don't even know your intention. Man, I have seen thousands, no, can't say thousands, let's say hundreds. I've seen hundreds of women say they love Pastor Dow and dishonor his house. It would burn me. That's another example of how the Bible had to become real to me because i got to produce love for these people. It can't be a sword. i got to pray and have mercy for them and compassion for them. You smiling in his face and you lying to his wife. Wow, women, really? You presenting your story to pastor and that ain't what happened. Wow, women, really? So I've just seen a lot. I've experienced a lot. I've watched a lot. I've changed a lot. When you see what you hate, don't be it. When you see what you hate, don't represent it. And you make yourself as an equal to that hate when you represent hating it. You get it? Man, I hate how this sister is and what she's doing, this, that, and the other. Okay, so you got the same hate she does. Because you ain't manifesting any form of maturity beyond her. She ma- she manifesting hers that way, and you're manifesting yours towards her. Talk to yourself like that. It's that moat and beam thing. So... I honestly, personal opinion, I'm going to insert personal opinion. I believe that the Father would grant me what you all need to hear. You know, you say, uh, how are you able to get to this place? Or how are you, you know, you, you, I believe you speak with wisdom, she says. I'm telling you, it's for your benefit. It's only because you love Yah so much, he says, I'm going to give you something. Why do we have the gift of a shepherd or a teacher? All praises to, to Brother Kabir, who, who could, could be and is our, our evangelist on the rise, right? I'm going to give you this because you need it, and I love you so much. And everybody wants to say, well, where's my gift? You've got to manifest something selfishly inside of your body to say that he loves you when he put it in front of you because he loves you? You get it? We got a pastor because he loves you. We got wisdom being ministered because he loves you. And you're so consumed with, well, this person got it all. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you all this. At Tabernacles, okay, speaking of hearing the Holy Spirit's voice, yes, I do. I'm walking up to the mic. And, you know, it's like it's loud. It's got music or whatever. I told you, I'm just, I got that stillness. It's just like, Hallelujah. And a sister was bowed over um, praying or worshiping or whatever. I just happened to glance. I'm just looking around while we're kicking off. You know, we're we're about to sing. And I heard, she loves me no more than you do. I've just given you more. 
Hey, talk about a constant humility. The Holy Spirit's voice is constant humility. Rise one time, daughter of Zion. Think you're something one time. Well, you got a show and you got a voice and you got three children. You got a new house. You got a wonderful husband. You got a pastor and he was in his house and he was your dog. Okay. So, so now what? Now that you heard my side. You can't, you can't look on men and women as men and women look. You got to see as y'all sees. Am I blessed? Absolutely. Am I highly favored? Absolutely. But I've crossed hell and hot water to get where I'm at. I fought so hard for where I'm at. And if you ain't got any kind of fight in you, you won't ever make it. Constantly. I don't know days and weeks and months without fasting. I've been with y'all for 14 years and I've constantly been in fasting. Even when I was overweight, you would have never imagined I was fasting. I was going long and hard on fast. Bound by weight and still wasn't shaking it. So eating wasn't a factor. Constant prayer. Making no excuse. We hours in the morning with newborns. You ain't sleeping. I don't care. I'm clinging to my yah. How am I going to be a mom if you don't help me? It ain't got to be four hours, vain repetition. It ain't got to be the same time of the day, every day. I'm not. I'm definitely not mocking if that's your routine. It's a priority, priority to me. Leads me to my next question, she says. I'm jumping to question nine. Can you speak on why spiritual warfare and a life of prayer is not a priority for women? I hear very few women dedicated to praying and warring for the whole of Israel. Why is this? And can you speak on the importance in this day and time why we should be interceding on behalf of Israel and not just our own personal lives? I don't really know how you can call yourself a woman and not be praying because I think it comes with a package. Okay? I don't know what kind of creation you are if you're not praying. Yeah, a whore. Don't be offended. I'm just saying. You don't find it. Let me, let me tell you Let me tell you about a woman's nature. How can I tell you? Because I'm a woman. If you're not getting anything out of it, you got no reason to, to do it. And that's where it loses everybody, my sister. Sadly, that's my answer. Why are so many women not praying and warring for Israel or for their own house? Because when you sit down to pray, you're not getting anything out of it. Mm. And if you don't get something immediately, you're going to give up. And y'all knows that because you have a selfish intention. You can't just come before him and worship him because of who he is or thank him and be satisfied. You got to say, I didn't feel him. He wasn't there. Maybe he didn't hear me. And you give up so easy. You don't see any reason for it. You face that truth about yourself and you change it. Not because Ashley said it, because you care enough about your soul and your people to say, damn, y'all can't even call on me to get a prayer group together. I got a, I got a prayer group going right now. We fasting seven days for somebody else. I don't got to call that out. I'm just using it as an example. I got a group of five sisters committed with me right now in the ministry fasting seven days for somebody else that don't even know about it. So don't tell me I'm not meeting prayer and requirements. You can do it. But who's, who's calling you? Who's asking you? What kind of fruit are you meeting behind the scenes? The people that I called up for this prayer group, some of them I'd have never known. If y'all hadn't placed them in my heart to do this, I, I don't know that you're praying or what you're doing behind the scenes. I can expect that you all are. But, hey, when I see your fruit and what you're doing and your commitment and your willingness and you're like, man, you ready to start tomorrow if your husband allows? Wow, all right. Hallelujah. Oh, you got, you got Psalms 109 memorized? Oh, hallelujah, you the one. I didn't know that. Oh, you got Psalm 35 in your heart like that? Oh, you're the one. Thank you. Praise y'all. This is what we're doing. You know, I don't lead women as men lead women. I'm not meaning to speak in that kind of way. It's just, it's a beautiful thing to be a part of. You might pray fast seven days and not see any result. It's not about that. It's not about you. It's not about you starting a seven-day fast tomorrow either or being disturbed that you've never done it. See, check your hearing. Check your hearing. Understand, understand polygyny to the best of your ability, Hebrew family, 
to the best of your ability, though you don't live it, you're all a bride of Yeshua. You're all meeting his requirement, whatever he's laid upon you, okay? i got to meet what he's laying on me. Do your role. Don't be intimidated by somebody else's. It will distort your perception. It will keep you jealous. It will keep you bound. Understand, it's you before his feet and nothing else and no one else. Hallelujah. So, I do hope and pray that this show is impactful. But even if, if I if I die tonight, you know, or in 10 years, 15, 20, 25, whatever, y'all be glorified. We're, all, we're replaceable, right? So, but I know with my, my trials and my experiences and my my diligence behind the scenes, uh, my fasting commitments, my life, my husband's strength and support behind me because he, um, I, I can do a show about him, you know, with those factors behind the scenes. And if each of you got some kind of, whatever your factors are, you can produce. And it's really motivating and life-changing, you know, to face all odds and not expect anyone else's. I, I do. I promise y'all, when I set out to um, study or to, like, even help with deliverance and stuff, I didn't have any anything, like, selfish in mind. We were really small at the time anyway, and everybody knew more than me, and everybody was beyond me in life experience and everything, so I knew my place. It was just like, man, I want to know what y'all know. You know, I want to, there was like no, what what I see today with all this like jealousy and like, it's like we adopted a bunch of children all at one time into one house and nobody's looking to the mature ones and going, oh yeah, that's our focus. They're all looking to each other like, wait a second chick, you just got adopted too. Hold on, you getting your info from the wrong one. Oh, wait a second, why are you over here counseling somebody? You, you need to learn again. And sister, why are you rebuking when you ain't produced any kind of kindness? Well, what's going on, children? You're just scattering. You know? That's that's what I see. Like, who, who are we seeking to? Don't call my name just because I'm on the on the show. Go go find somebody sound in your life and get some kind of wisdom because I promise you, you're going to wish you did. you get getting burned over and over. See, this is the problem. We get burned over and over, and we build up so much scar tissue and resistance that we don't even care how much we get burned again. Nothing's even saying, I'm doing this wrong. I need to recheck it. We think because we're a mom, we got it together, and we don't need help with our children. Because I'm a wife, I got it together. I don't need help with my with my marriage. Huh? Where's our humility? My heart is different, y'all. I see people with my same heart because we're all supposed to be one spirit, one mind. I see saints and sisters with my same heart. This is not a glorified Ashley show. This is glorified Yah, Yah, and Yah plus nothing. What Yah has done for me. But watch, watch me produce fruit. Look at me. Go where I go. Live with me if you got to. Watch me. I'll show you how much I love y'all. That's how you got to talk to yourself. Put something before me, y'all, that I can show you I'll love you. And if I don't love you and it's bigger than me, I'm still going to trust you get me past it. And I'm still going to produce. And when I come out, I know I love you. You know? Tough talk to yourself. And nobody else is going to do this for you. Man, nobody got me through 14 years. Just yeah. When do you know, when did you know who you were and your role in Messiah? Is it hard to deal with people who may not understand and possibly shun you? Does it happen to you? And if so, how are you able to cope? Um, one of the... One of the things that comes, and I'll, I'll speak about pastor for a second again, um, with wisdom, with understanding, with the manifestation of the gifts that he has, it's a spiritual dynamic to get strength as a hedge around you that doesn't allow your flesh to be disturbed as flesh can be disturbed. I'll try to explain it like this. When you walk in the flesh and you're disturbed by everything, y'all know what that's like, right? So you can't relate to someone who has set themselves apart or walks in the spirit and nothing bothers them. Or, yes, things bother them like, give me my damn Bible back. You know, ain't nothing fleshly about it. You stole the Bible, return it, right? 
I'm just giving you that for an example. But when you have somebody that is, um, you know, you, you gain from Yah, you get strength from Yah, you get rewards from Yah, you get tests from Yah, you get annihilated, humiliated, you get uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera from Yah, blessed be his holy name, with all of that comes a hedge. Because I, the, the, the despite and the hate that I get, I wouldn't be able to take it if I was in the flesh. And the spirit is nothing. It's a light thing. Not even you don't even think about it. You don't even notice it. You'd almost have to call it out or drag my attention to it. Well, then how do you know? How do you how do you get shunned? I've had people. I've had sisters come up to me and tell me, I don't listen to your show, because I sat in a crowd of women talking against your show, and they planted seeds in my mind. I believed them, and I ain't listened for years. Oh, okay. Hey, sounds cool. Me sharing the story with y'all on a, on a radio, right? Let somebody come to your face and tell you that. Now, love them. Hmm? All right. Here's another one. The reason why I tell y'all that women wait for that prime opportunity to call out the thing about you that they hate. Right? The thing you... Uh, may already know about yourself or the thing you're working on, right? And they'll get in a social environment and just throw darts at it. You on your face about it, you trying, uh, and they don't know. They're just throwing in your flesh because they ain't praying. They don't know they're being used. So back in the day, when I first started this radio show, radio show and I'm doing it out of obedience, right? And um, Pastor had a lot of influence. Uh, he wasn't giving me, giving me weekly titles or anything, but in the beginning, you know, he might call me over to the table and say, hey, um, you know, you might not always have a topic. You know, you might just go on and answer phone calls or whatever. Just be faithful, you know, things like that. Just just speak the truth. Let the chips fall where they lay. You know, the, the women need it. The women need it, you know. You speak well, hallelujah. You know, that kind of that kind of support in the background, same from my husband, you know. So early on it was just, it was just me um, he just talking, not even knowing any kind of, if you want to say persecution, but any kind of hate would even come. Like I was, I was totally blinded. Because when you have the intention to to share what you've been through for reason of uh, your gain and your strength to pull you out of the fire, you have no idea. Like I guess I was just blindsided. Like oh shit, yeah, Satan, I forgot. <laughs> like he's gonna come, you know. So early on, everything wasn't easy. Um, darts and things that were said in groups. You know, wasn't easy, um, but it was to toughen me and strengthen me for for even more. You know, because it, it got more. It got you know, women would make stabs at um, my ability to speak, as if it was all me, and you know, like I was a uh, smooth talking, smooth saying kind of thing, like working witchcraft, like you know, um, controlling my audience because I know what to say. Oh, you, you, she a soft talker. You know she know how to talk. You know she know the right words to say, to sway, stuff like that. They would say in groups. So I just stayed in my face about it. I didn't take them to prayer. I'm not taking a her or a she or a, remember, you know your opponent, right? I'm standing on my face like, man, Father, I don't, I don't want any of that in me. So I'm going to tell you my, my quick story. I was just sharing this, no joke. I didn't know this was going to come up. I just shared this with my husband yesterday, and he laughed and laughed and laughed. So I was like, Deacon. So early on, and the first, I don't know, maybe year or whatever, I'm like, and some of y'all have heard this. I'm like, Father, how do I know that this is you on the show? Like, it's just me and this microphone. I'm just, okay, I'm putting in my work, right? I'm, I'm studying. I'm trying to seek him for, please, I'm talking to your people. This is like, man, you know, like, I don't want to sway nobody wrong. I don't want to draw a negative attention to my husband or his reputation, his name, none of that. Like, this is big for me, you know. Um, so I'm on my face like, Father, is this just me? Like, you know, I sold cars, right? And bullshit you. I didn't know nothing about the engine, but I promise I'll tell you something so you buy it. I didn't work there long, but it sounded good. I did public speaking. If I forgot a fact, I would just lie. Like, I was just telling a sister, wasn't I? She's behind me. I'm like, 
1903, Ford Company, yada, yada, whatever. I'm talking to college students, and I'm, I'm BSing. Not everything. I worked hard for the A's I made, but if I forgot, I was just on the fly, you know. Um, when I was a little girl, I used to stand in my basement and pretend to read to hundreds of people. I'd get my little podium out and stand and try to read, you know, books and this, that, and the other. I, I promise you, in kindergarten, I was reading encyclopedias to the best of my ability, and I wouldn't put them down. I didn't retain the daggone thing, but I just always loved reading, right? And so this is kind of build the, the, the speaking and the talking in front of people was always a passion for me. I don't know why. It was not for selfish reasons. I didn't want attention. I would actually observe how people speak, and like journalists is something that I wanted to do. College athletes weren't allowed to work in the field because you were committed to, you know, basketball, basketball, basketball. So I wasn't able, I wasn't allowed by the college to be a journalist, but it is something I wanted. Matter of fact, uh, and I say journalist, but I'm meaning a reporter, someone that's in front of the camera, like we're live, you know. I saw it at the time as talent. Now it's just bogus. It's not even interesting. But at the time, I'm little, you know, that that's talented. Like you're staring at this person, paying attention to we're live at the scene and this happened. Um, so right before I came to Straightway, not knowing a thing about what the y'all was about to do in my life, I'm dressing like some of y'all still do. I'm acting like some of y'all still do. And I'm going to work every day in an elevator in a big city skyscraper. And at the very, very base of my job, the entire first floor was a reporter and journalism school. It was a two-year, you know, get your degree kind of thing. And this was after I'd already graduated college. But I was like, I would stop by every day and I would watch, like, the the students, some old, some some young, and they're practicing how to speak. And I'm just staring through the glass and really, really was very close to committing my money and my time, you know, like quitting my job and going that way just months literally before uh, the community. But anyway, so natural ability, I'm sure, yes, okay, it plays a part. All right, so let me get to my story that I was telling Deacon when I was seeking y'all, and I'm like, man, you know, uh, okay, so I could talk. Um, I had to develop the art of listening when I moved here. It's like, yeah, I can talk, okay, uh, yeah, know a few big words or whatever, um, but I sought y'all yeah, not to let this show be a, a natural ability thing. Uh, nothing, you know, I, it's him, 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 okay? And so I had two back-to-back -back weeks of dang near having a dumb and deaf spirit. I couldn't remember. No, I couldn't think of nothing. I didn't have no verses. I'm like, oh, okay, we need to go to the phone call. I don't, I don't even remember. It was really like I had to cover up and pretend to every one of y'all years ago that, oh, my Jesus, y'all done, like, what is going on here? I couldn't find him. I couldn't. <laughs> it was bad. So I'm like, you know, that whole week, like, I don't know what just happened, but I don't want to experience that again, Father. So whatever you got to do, and here it comes, same thing. It's like, oh, yeah, you you prayed wondering, is it me? You know, so let me take me out of it and show you you're an ass, right? So don't get caught up thinking in one moment that oh, I was just Ashley and Mother Jennifer. That's a, that's a problem we got in Israel. We don't think y'all's spirit abides in vessels because we're so bound by the flesh. You got no clue your creator is speaking to you. And so when he, when I, I said I'd never say it again, I was seeking hard to always have good conversation, good topics, and, you know, really ignite passion in, in the women that want to hear as few as it be. So when pastor says ain't nobody listening to the show, I know. I already know. But I, I'm like him. I'm following him. Are you pulling a plug on YouTube, Pat? I'm right behind you. What did you, you say? Last show? Last sister, sister show? Hallelujah. I ain't got no string attached, no emotion attached, no desire to say, share, nothing. This is for you. Some of y'all are too grateful for that to happen. I'm not saying that uh, that it's all, but I'm just not stupid. I say to Mother Jennifer, I used to say it all the time. If the women of the ministry ain't listening to the shepherd that taught me, I know they ain't going to listen to me. We got to go down the chain and down the order, right? You ain't going to listen to the man who poured into me? who I set myself apart behind the scenes to listen to, constantly paying attention to his walk and his steps so that I follow. Why? Because I want to worship Pastor Dow? No, I'm trying to make it to the same kingdom I know he's going to. 
And it benefits me to follow after righteous people. I don't live with them, don't speak to them, barely see them, and I still know his mind. So where you at? What you thinking? You know, let's get on one mind here. Number, oh, so she she did say, when did you know who you were and your role in the Messiah? Um, I had a I had a very very near death experience, and I would say before that, um, I really didn't see the importance of the impact you can make in someone else's life. I do know, um, being a mother has been everything to me. Um, because of the selfishness that I'm almost certain you can't see in yourself unless you involve yourself in a child's life. If you're not a mother, maybe you're you can be an auntie, maybe you can be, you know, a, a nurturer, a caregiver in some kind of some kind of way, but a woman must manifest selflessness. It's part of her character. And uh yeah, being a mother um is really when I started to understand the importance of, of my role. As small and minute as it may be, you got three souls coming behind you that's banking on your behavior, and you got a cold and dark world that's ready to ravage them. And you need to manifest some, and if not all, you can of Christ because the world will never show them Christ. I can't represent the world to my sons. I can't be like the women of the world to my sons because they got to know that Christ lives and dwells in some women somewhere or they'll never desire it. A man will always go to the woman of the world when there's world in the woman that he knew, right? It's not, I don't want to say it's always a dynamic like that because you got righteous women that will lose their their children to the world, too. So, um, you know, there's just so many aspects. I can't cover them all. But, yeah, being a mother was definitely when it was like, okay, this is it. You know, if you don't do nothing else, man, stop yelling. Stop being frustrated. Show, pick them up when they cry. Hug them. Hold them. Don't care that somebody's saying, why the hell are you holding your child all the time? And I, I, I faced all kind of opposition when I was just trying to find how to be a mom. Man, it was like, Jesus, could you help me and not hinder you tell me not to pick them up when they cry, but you ain't helping. You ain't picking them up, so I'm going to do this, right? Deacon, what do you say? You know? And we just give each other hell for every little circumstance. Can't wait to just devour one another. I'm not going to do that. Mark my words. I'm not going to lay a stomach block. Father, hold me to it. So is it hard to deal with people who may not understand and possibly shun you? Not at all. Not at all, because you get so hedged and you get so much strength and you get so much confidence in the Most High Yah that he'll teach you, he'll train you, he'll use his men to do it. He'll break you, you know. Um, you stay you stay lowly in mind, so you know where people are at. Not easily offended at all. Uh, it's, it's easy to love when you've been through what I've been through. Um, have you ever had, number six, what we got, four more? Have you ever had any regrets in this walk? If there was anything that you could change either in yourself or the sisters you come in contact with, what would that be? I have never had a regret, ever. I don't believe in them. Because I believe the regret will hold you to that event and the past too long. And you won't rise out of it. I think um, Pastor always said, you got an opportunity to go back and do something over, you do it the same damn way. Because you'd be the same mind you were in when you did it. So why are we saying we go back and do something different? It's not even a, it's, it's, that's fantasy to me. I noticed a pattern about the generation in front of me. They live with, they're full of regrets. They're full of pity. They're wanting attention for what they've been through while living nothing. I'm not saying everyone. I'm saying when you're in your 30s and you're looking ahead at people wanting somebody to be an example for you, it's limited. And you start to really see what they are representing. And one of those things is a bunch of damn regrets. And you live in, you live in the, there was a study, a scientific study one time, done over some thousands of uh, people that were over the age of 70. Okay, do you have any regrets? If so, what are they? Right? And... I can't remember the huge statistic. Let's just take a guess, 88, whatever, 98. 
but 88% of them all lived with regrets. Well, how long have you had it? All my life, you know. What would you What you do about it? See, I believe that you hold you hold on to a regret when you're not producing. So we gotta I gotta get out of this regret and do something. I'll give you an example. Man, I regret that I didn't raise my children in the way. Help somebody else's child. That's tribal, right? Get out of the regret. Man, I regret that I I didn't want children. Now I don't have them. Be a mom to somebody else's child. Be an auntie. Be a friend to a mother. Be a be a um a friend to a mother who doesn't have a dad in her children's life. We can't do that. We just sit back with our finger. Like everybody's supposed to get it together. We stay individualized. Well, I want more children now. I can't have them. I, I regret I got my tubes tied. Man, if you're thinking tribally and you're working tribally, or who are you pouring into that would give you satisfaction that you would say, you know what, I didn't have any more children. I had my tubes tied, but damn it, I'm the best grandma. You know, it's producing that's going to get you out of the funk. And so part of it was early on me being hard-headed and saying, I'm not going to have any regrets because you just hurt them so much, you know. And then the other part is when you embrace humility, you just say, I'm going to try to live every day free of regrets. A lot of things, uh, a lot of mistakes I made, you know, you've heard. And, and I'm still ongoing, right? Um, I, I'm I'm not in the kingdom. I got my feet right here on the same earth as y'all. Y'all don't forget that. But um, Pastor said, you know, he told all y'all, yeah, I've seen, I've seen her shit on herself. You know, I've seen you. I've changed your diapers a few times or whatever. Uh, it's not, I don't regret anything. I wouldn't go back and change anything. What? Why? Why? That's what you ask yourself. Um, and then the other part was when I met a woman named Mother Stallings, and I would listen to her, listen to her intently, and she was um, mid-80s when she left here. Mid-80s. Imagine that, that experience. Now, hold on, okay? father was a sharecropper off of a cotton field. If you know anything about that, that's a really fancy term for a slave. These white men still taking everything you own. And she grew up on a cotton plantation right beside of sharecroppers. She made her own mattress, stuffed it full of cotton and rags, and it wasn't nothing but two blankets on top of each other, sewed together with the ends, got some feathers from her chickens. That's what she slept on in the floor. Shared forks and knives because everybody don't got one. Hit a skunk right between the eyes with a stone to kill it and keep it from the only chicken they had or the only few chickens they had. Because you, you got to defend when you're in poverty, right? A woman whose fingers would bleed as a little girl raised in the fields. No music, no hip hop, you know what I'm saying? No, no uh, headphones in the ear and YouTube and all this fluff. So uh, a type of woman that this generation would mock. And when I sat with her and listened to her, she said, I have no regrets. A lot of mistakes, no regrets. And I, I've always kind of been that way. I don't believe in failure, my sister. Maybe you have the sisters that are listening. Maybe you have something in your life that says, man, I, I bombed this. I failed this. Make it something you know, turn it into something, produce something out of it, um, at least for me, and I know, yes, my life is different from some of y'all, because I did come in, and in, in my 20s, into the, into the faith, um, but, okay, so, what, what are we running from, we're running from the emotion that was tied to, to the event, there would be no regret without the emotion, and I know enough about deliverance that every emotion in you is, is bound to be a manifested spirit, if it's not, justified by Yah, if it's not the truth of Yah. So if I'm regretting, I'm borderline and giving place to a spirit here. You know, if I'm resentful, revengeful, frustrated, all these emotions are spirits. So give no place to the devil. You know, it's not it's not pride to say I have no regrets by any means. It's just I've learned a lot. And, um, okay, um, I'm 38 and I wouldn't do anything different. 
Let's see. What advice would you give, question number seven, what advice would you give to women coming into a patriarchal ministry who may have had horrible acts done to them by men? Hallelujah. I'm going to go to a ministry break, and I'll be back to answer that question. Thank y'all so much for, for tuning in. Let me find what I want to what I want to play. Let's see. I'm I'm going, what is this? I'm sure y'all are thinking the same thing. What was that? I don't know, but it caught my attention. It said children on it. Okay? That's the true story. All right, ministry break for real this time. Closer and known known by Pastor and Mother Carol. So many um, old faces that came through many, many years ago, never forgotten by the old-timers, and me being on the tail end of the old-timer crew, he was just one of them. So him and his wife visited here, and he was an amazing pianist. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you all for enduring me and listening tonight. We're going back to an email of a sister who is interviewing me. If I can say that, she has a question. So, all right, what advice would you give to women coming into a patriarchal ministry who may have had horrible acts done to them by men? When they hear a strong man like Pastor say, "You need to hush, submit, get in your role," it may be hard to hear. What suggestions can you give to new sisters who will struggle with having a man rule over them when they've been crushed by men in the past? Um. An interesting dynamic of the father is he's going to gain whoever is his and he's not going to gain whoever's not. And it doesn't matter <laughs> how I answer the question or it doesn't even matter how his shepherd delivers the message. As long as his shepherd draws with love and kindness, uh, these women have a decision to make. And the decision is, is my excuse for how I am currently behaving and acting, is it going to get me into the kingdom and is my excuse strong enough to stand against this truth? And the answer is always no. So, depending on my sisters, I'll teach you this. Depending on your relationship 
one to another within the ministry, whether you talk socially, social media, phone, or even see each other on the Shabbat and have an opportunity to help someone coming out of a struggle like this, sometimes those women need you to become an, uh, an example of love to them, you know, to help them get out of that abuse, that hurt, that rejection, because it is critical um, for her to see something other than what has always been manifest to her, which is great hate, you know, verbal abuse, et cetera. Uh, it's critical. But at the same time, perchance she's not close enough to see it and to see love manifest to take her out of this mind that she just got to have faith in here and she's got to want the Father enough. So there's nothing that should be inside of her that is louder than the truth being ministered to her. Um, and it's a, it's a hard pill to swallow for some, but sometimes the circumstances were these women got themselves in uh, physical abusive relationships because of their mouth and how they were. And if they face them on self, then it wouldn't be so hard to hear. You need to hush, submit, and get in your role. Because if you were, maybe that wouldn't have come upon you. At the same time, there are, there are some of you that were children that struggled with, uh, you know, abuse, sexual abuse, and those things growing up. But you're faulting the wrong one, you know. Um, so you, you get bitter and resentful towards the most high, and you say to yourself, where were you? and you weren't there for me, and you say all those painful and rejecting things to the Creator, and so He shows Himself to you, um, and then you reject Him. So it's more comfortable to live in your bubble to protect yourself from the entire world than to ever make yourself vulnerable to say, I'll be hurt again. See, I'm not, I'm not um, naive or oblivious to hurt, because hurt can come. I don't. I learned this from Shepherd. I cannot hold any of you coming to the ministry wanting to learn from me. I can't hold you responsible for the women that spurned me. Do you understand? It's the same concept. Relationship, relationships across the board manifest the same way. I can't say because of what she did to me and she left and she's gone now that I can't continue the show or that I can't you know, help you, deliver you. Well, she's making stabs and she's making comments and she's slandering and she, 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 but what about her? Mother Carol's a huge advocate of that. She's always said, hey, what's the show about? I don't got that yet, Mother. You want to come on? That's my joke with her. You want to come live? You want to go on live, Mother? <laughs> she always, you know I would. Um, but, you know, do it for the one, you know, and... At this point, you don't you don't even need the you don't even need the encouragement because it's, it's literally just a, a responsibility I have and I do it just like I teach my children. It's a responsibility I have. I don't need high fives, um, but it, it's it's it doesn't take away from the impact of encouragement. So that's that's pivotal to me. I appreciate it. But going back to that for a second, um, a strong man like Pastor say you need to hush and submit and get in your role. He didn't hit you. You know, he didn't abuse you. He didn't sexually molest you or rape you. What's going on here? You're faulting who? You know, potentially you're faulting men. Um, but hallelujah, if you weren't molested or raped or physically abused or uh, sexually violated or, you know, what would your testimony be? You know, we overcome by the word of our testimony. So now you have something in front of you that you need to overcome so that you will be called an overcomer and be given a life and granted the tree of living water and the kingdom. So you gotta you gotta have a story, you gotta have a place you're starting from. Um I had a sister uh, call me the other day, it was a really good question. She was like, you know, I wanna I wanna help somebody with addiction and uh, how do I do it? And uh you know, you can get into a you can get into a big hour conversation if you want to, but the bottom line is she does it. You know, she's the one that's gonna do it. I've seen, I've seen women that are uh, addicted fall prey to their addiction time and time and time again, and it takes them out of the faith. And I saw women that were committed and still standing with, free of addiction, crack, cocaine, heroin, uh, marijuana, 
cigarettes, alcohol, you know. So who are you? And I've always had the mind to say, well, what, why, how can someone do it? And I say I can't, you know. How can someone in this ministry say they did it and you sit over here and sulk about it and say you can't? We got endless testimonies of women who have a background like this. And we're supposed to give you an ear to your lack of hearing? Can't do it. You know, not that we wouldn't be full of compassion and be a friend to receive you and meet you at your need. As I told another sister, you be everything that sister needs you to be. If she needs you to call every day and check on her and make sure she ain't smoking a cigarette, you call her every day. If she don't want you in her life and she want to she wanna do what she's doing, I'm just making up cigarettes, but whatever the circumstance is, then don't waste your time. Don't feel obligated, you know, and we need to hear that kind of talk. Next question, number eight, what are some of the hindrances that you see that keep women from accepting Yah for who he really is? Flesh, flesh, flesh. The world, the world, the world. Our, our hearing, our hearing is off. Our hearing is very, very off. Um, we, get, we get motivated to do the wrong things, you know. Um, I'll give you an example of how our hearing is off. When you don't deal with your demons and you don't deal with the bones buried in your closet, as that old saying says, then when truth comes out, you respond wrong. Okay. Pastor has a son, a beautiful son. Pastor was a great father years ago. Now he's telling you, I'm going to take the wisdom I have. You, you know what he's saying if you're hearing him. You're going to be a, a, a damn good father. So mark his words. Uh, we already know. Okay. So now, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to be a great father. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this, you know, this standard, this example is what I'm going to do. He's just, hey, he's got, he's got the willpower, the strength, the mind, everything it takes, the spirit. So here goes here goes rejection. Oh man, I I never had a son. Oh man, my my son's like twenty five. Uh, what 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 are we what are we hearing? This this is this is a main problem with women. We can't even have a mature conversation about any topic without you wallowing in your sorrow because you don't handle your demons behind the scenes. I tell women all the time, we are weaker vessels, but we are not to manifest weakness constantly and consistently. And what I mean is weakness of the flesh, you know. It's like we don't care about our husband's name. We just cut any old kind of fool. Don't give a damn what people think about him. Wow, you know. We're not considerate of the attention and the drama that we are causing. You can't, you can't hide your flesh, and deal with it. So, you know, the, the lust for the world and the lust for the men and the drive for whatever's being talked about, it's like, man, Jesus. You know, we, we pull up we pull up jealousy and, oh, man, yeah, I'm, I'm jealous. And we pull up rejection, oh, man, I, I deal with rejection. And then a year from now we talk about jealousy and, oh, oh man, I, I'm jealous. Now, where's your overcoming testimony? Where's your strength? And we trying to get into the kingdom, sisters. Let's go. Come on. You're going to wake up one day. All your strength is gone. You put it in man. You put it in your butt because you love its shape, and you put it in your in its wall, in your walk and in the stores that you go to and the credit cards you got. And then everything is gone. What are you going to do when he mocks you in your calamity? And we don't think like him. And calamity ain't got to mean a, a, a bomb drops on your apartment complex. No, it just simply means when loss comes to you, you lose your money, you lose your job, you lose your husband, you lose your child, take something away from you, you cut a literal fool and y'all don't come to your rescue and you lose your damn mind and your hair falls out and you didn't care about the fool you cut when you was with the Most High. That's the kind of foolishness we see. I know it sounds crazy. I guess you got to have boots on the ground on a community or, or experience with women to even believe my words. But 
some of the hindrances that, that keep women from accepting Yah is actually the other women in the ministry. That's that's a big hindrance right there. You can't see an example of holiness and strive for it. You got to put your eyes on everybody else that's not exemplifying it, that's not producing, and say, damn, what's wrong with Christ? He ain't here. Congregating and clicking in our little groups because we got familiar spirits. Don't know nothing. I ain't paying attention to wisdom. Wouldn't even know if she was, like, like my husband said, you wouldn't even know if wisdom hit you in the face. <laughs> wisdom is hitting you in, some, in the face, he says, and you don't know. So you wouldn't know if it hits you in the face, because it is. In context, it was a beautiful conversation we had, but how'd I do, Sakina? That's pretty good. Hallelujah. All right. Number nine says, can you speak on, yeah, I did that one already. Uh, she said, I, I hear very few women are dedicated to praying and warring for the whole of Israel. And why is this? Remember, y'all, I said because you don't get anything out of it. Don't let the fact that you're sitting down with your Bible and you get up and you forgot. Well, what was it? What verse I was on? Don't let that hinder you from the next time that you open your Bible. What was you trying to get out of it? He has some selfish desire. I get a funny feeling, and hopefully hopefully, uh, I'll get every green light on the way to work today because I prayed. Right? And because I prayed... I'm going to get every green light. And then you get to work pissed off because you hit every red light. And you done lost your faith. No reason to pray tomorrow because it's going to be the same damn red lights. Right? That's kind of, man, get out of this selfishness. Jesus, help me. I say, that's why I'm glad to be a part of a tribe because it don't take a man having a son to be a man and pour into somebody else's son. You know? It don't take a woman having a seed to pour into somebody else's seed. Could you get out of yourself? Could you be an auntie to him, please? Deacon Bell's gone to work all day. You want to be a father to the Bell children? He'd let you. You know? Jesus, in our own world. Getting my paycheck. Don't know nothing about y'all. Number 10, can you speak on the breaking of a woman's will? What was your process? Now, was there ever a time when you realized your will may have been in the way, preventing y'all from moving on your behalf? How did you overcome? I got a good one for you. I got I got to go to Bible. I got to go to biblical marriage. Where you at, Mother Jennifer? Where are you at, Mother Jennifer? I got to go to I got to go to biblical marriage. Jesus, help me. No experience. I just gotta just gotta talk from what I see. Okay, so. When was there a time that your will was involved? My will was definitely involved in biblical marriage, but different from most of you, you know? Uh, so, yes, fear. Okay, my husband might take another wife. Man, fear. Man, whatever your response is. You know, jealousy. Uh, he's going to get something better, someone better, someone looking better, uh, someone doing better. Okay, you got to face that. I'm going to tell you a thought I had that I've never said on this show ever. And one of the main reasons why, hallelujah, look, Mother Jennifer, my, my biblical marriage representative, just texted me uh, through someone else's phone. Please continue, she says. So I will. Thank you, Mother Jennifer, for your support and for even listening. Hallelujah. Um, one, of my, one of my constant nagging fears that plagued me at the introduction of biblical marriage was and my behind the scenes communication with my father and my creator was are you turning over the ministry that I've dedicated my life to to the lust of men's hearts there will be no end to men when they're given over to their lust Will it be a whorehouse, Father? Will men be able to contain themselves, Yah? Will they say no to a vagina? Will they fall prey to women who seduce them? Okay, so I'm going to give y'all a real talk. I've seen the strong men survive and be stronger. I've seen the weak men fall. I've seen my fear come to pass in some homes and hearts, not on this land. And 
my fear, when it has now manifested itself, to, to some of y'all, it ain't my fear no more. You know why? Because I dealt, my, I dealt with my own heart. I dealt with my own fear. I put my trust in Yah. I put my trust in my husband. I put my trust in my shepherd. See, this is the kind of stuff that we have to talk about because maybe some of you are thinking it and you got to hear it. We know you're not going crazy. A woman's built completely off of security. We're begging men to say, please lead us. Please secure me. Please don't fall for her vagina. Please don't believe her lies and her manipulation. She's deceiving you. She's a hypocrite. And you can't say it. You know why? Because y'all is your defense. Don't rise out of your place, woman. Hold yourself accountable to the character y'all has built in you and follow. So, yeah, it, it, it it's a benefit to share this aspect. So what's I got to do with can you speak on breaking a woman's will? Well, I had a I had a huge fear with the depths of the wickedness that I had to visit within my own self. You're gonna say that another woman who has that same level of wickedness in her that's not gonna contain it or love the father or repent? We're gonna just open our doors to that? Oh, Father Jesus. Right? That's not true. That's not what happened. But you can, you know, the devil can paint all kinds of fears. And you say all kinds of things. And for me, that was, that was huge. Because I dedicated my life to this. I would die for this. I believe shepherd plus nothing, Father. You wouldn't lie to him, would you? You wouldn't lead me astray, would you? You wouldn't let the community fall, would you? I was taking the word to him. I'm not worried about I'm not worried about Shepherd. I'm worried about what what kind of ripple effect this is gonna have to trying to justify men's lust. Now I'm just not disturbed. But nonetheless, I had to break my will to the Father's will and submit in if you want to say worst case scenario at the time. That was worst case scenario. I'm still not even an, I'm still not even a um participant, you know? So you walk in, in darkness in part. And so I had to, you know, surrender and, and present those visualizations to my mind to, to check my heart to see how much I love Yah, you know, that if this man fell and this man fall and this man and this man or whatever, um, would I still love you? Would you still cover me? Yes, would you still keep your commitment with me? You know, I, I gotta, I gotta believe. You know, devastation come to all communities. Bombs drop and we are ransacked, and I'm the only one left. Don't leave me. Take me to the rock. You know, and we need those experiences. We put our trust in 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 the life we live way too much. Your job's always going to be there, and your money's always going to be there, and your grocery store's always going to be there, and you don't remove comforts. Let's go back to that one. What's some of the hindrances? You don't remove comforts on your own. You know, fasting is removing comforts. Your, your, your strength is small. You can't deny your flesh. Okay, so do something consistently about it, right? Show y'all how much you love him. Remember, he don't need you to fast. You need to fast. And when you take away Nicole Moore, where you at? I'm, I'm by myself tonight. Nicole Moore, you are next on The Price is Right. Come on up. Nicole Moore will tell you all about removing comfort. Hey, turn the, turn the AC off. Get hot a little bit. Don't, don't, start the, don't start the heater. Get cold a little bit. Just make a commitment that you're not going to say, I'm hot and I'm cold and I'm hungry. Just make that commitment for for a month, you know. Don't let it come out of your mouth. Just do those things that, hey, well, this is what we're going to eat. We're going to eat these beans and these rice. I'm not saying this is what, you know, straight way of doing and, you know, don't don't get it out of context. I'm just, in, in general, man, I just, I really believe in, as a woman, being as mentally tough as you can be to manifest Yah's uh, weakness, I'm sorry, Yah's strength in your weakness, um, being weaker, being a weaker vessel doesn't mean that you are 
a lot of the opportunity to manifest weakness again and again and again and constantly be endured and forgiven and then not be judged, you know. So you just constantly take your weaknesses to the Father and your comforts to the Father and deny yourself sometimes, you know, and deny yourself the thing you want. Hallelujah. So that was my that was my ten questions. Thank you so much. How long did I talk? Jesus. I got five minutes left. Is that what it says? Oh, wow, y'all. Hallelujah. All right, real quick. Real quick, from the background. Thank y'all so much for listening. I had a question from the sound room. No, it wasn't Sakina. <laughs> that said, um, Ashley, you told me that I could harden my heart to gain strength. Not to harden my heart towards my creator, but to harden my heart to gain strength through Yah's discernment. How do you do that? Okay, without being loud. Is that correct? Yes? Okay. Um, it's going to sound, I always tell you this English language is, is, is hard to um, put into words and articulate something to, to get it received by the audience. So if I'm saying harden your heart, that sounds contrary to what the Bible said, which is, you know, not to harden your heart. And love will actually uh, shelter your heart and strengthen your heart to where you can still constantly give, not based on receiving, because you are so safe and secure in the most highs um, relationship, that what you're doing for him and what he's doing with you and for you and like Pastor says, if you've never done anything else, it's enough, you know. So you get you get secure in Yah, and you do that by, um, what I mean is not being so easily affected by voices in your head, voices in someone else. Uh, if you don't harden yourself to that, then you're not gonna you're not gonna gain strength, and you're not gonna increase in faith, you know. Um, so I watched. I've watched Pastor experience, and, and even his house, you know, experience let down after let down after let down, betrayal, uh, this, that, and the other, and um, those who I call, you know, I call his name a lot, but there's many other men, you know, our brother Kabir. He can't, he lost a, he lost a wife and all his children, eight children. He can't hold his um next family, his next wife is he can't hold us accountable for what she did, so he hardens himself with love. That I'm not gonna be bothered by this anymore. I'm gonna be strong in this, you know, and y'all y'all produces that strength, but don't allow a weakness that you have to just remain and remain and remain and remain and and Satan just pushes that button and pushes that button and pushes that button. Jesus. Right? So you have to, there's a toughness and a strength that you got to get in your heart that doesn't allow things to penetrate it and take you away from the love of Yah. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Does that help? Okay, that helps. And the last one was, um, should you ever go to a sister about how she makes you feel? Um, and I'll answer this this way. Should you ever go to a sister about how she makes you feel? Me, I never did because I needed to be strengthened in order not to feel that way. Does it accomplish anything to go to someone and say, you make me feel? I mean, you got to weigh the cost. If this sister's not spiritual and she's in the flesh half the time anyway, you're going to walk away even heavier. So you got to deal with how you feel. And that ties into hardening your heart and creating a resistance in your heart that's not going to be moved. It doesn't harden your heart and not allow love. It strengthens your heart, shells your heart, and allows you to love. Okay, so know, know it, know the difference. But I'm not going to a sister about how I feel about anything. Now, mind you, it's not even a temptation. But early on, maybe it was. I went to sisters if I knew I made them feel some kind of way and I repented and I got it right. I mean, with fear. I hope y'all understand. 
that Christ takes it serious when you do something to his little ones, his children. He takes it serious. You're going to pay. The way you cock your head, the sass, and talk any kind of way, especially to somebody pure, young, virgin-minded, whatever, uh, just moved to your community, uh, man, you know, where's, where's your mercy? So start really developing that sincere nature that says, I'm going to get all my relationships right, and I'm going to do it with gasoline drawers on <laughs> And if you're from another country, I know they're like, what does uh, two dead flies mean? You know, it's a little joke. This pastor says, I don't care two dead flies about some of this stuff. When he says two dead flies, it's just the value, right? So in another country, it's like some of the things we say uh, makes no sense. But um, what, what did I even say again? Yeah, gasoline. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my audience. Gasoline, George, on. Um, it's just, you're already on fire, right? And who's putting out draws, yeah? Underwear. Underwear. Who's putting out a fire when you are when you got gasoline on your underwear? You're burning. You're running, right? So we need to be quick to repent to one another. We need to be fearful in each other's presence, not fearful on eggshells that we can't be ourselves. We're just so easily offended. It's where we're at. As I said, we adopted a bunch of people at the same time, and now everyone don't know how to act. Give it a little bit of time, and you'll form mature relationships, and it'll all be over. Just endure, okay? Endure, if that's even an encouragement to you. Hallelujah. Mother Jennifer, in the show. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where you at, Mother Jennifer? I'll end it with this. I got a, I got a, I got a comment in the chat room. I don't even know what it says, but I know who it's from, and I love her. So here I go. I got to, I got to get it. I got to go to it. Thank you, y'all. Bless you, Mama Ashley and Daughters of Zion. Be encouraged. Work hard to a living in love and righteousness. Run hard and endure to the end. The time is at hand. It is now. Shalom. Hallelujah. Shout out to Sister Amara. I miss you. Hey, Amara. That's my sister from California. We spent hours and hours and hours together, didn't we, Amara? And I've been meaning to give you a shout-out for weeks on the show since you left. Look forward to seeing you again. I hope you're able to apply the things that you learned here. And as she said when she was here, Ashley, my experience would have been different without you. And that means a lot. I love you. Bless y'all. And may we hear with clarity this week. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom.